question for you. Are you tired of all the political hullabaloo going on right now? If you haven't already voted, election's coming up this Tuesday. And after that, maybe, just maybe, for a couple of months, we might have a little rest. As you've heard, this season's election, this year's election, is said to be the tightest election, the most expensive election in the history of our country. I think they say that every election, though. <laughs> and the pundits, I call them the talking heads, will be analyzing what occurred for the long time to come, no matter who is elected. Still, prepare yourselves for the next couple of days. All the negative campaigning, and Lord God, I've never heard such vindic vindictive, uh, what do I want to say, tripe, let's try it, tripe. All the negative commercials, both political parties, will continue with a vengeance. In these last remaining days, candidates will deluge us with pledges, promises, easy to remember snippets, messages and short handles that hopefully will influence us on Tuesday, election day. The propriety or the priority rather of safe borders from the horde of refugees and immigrants. The need for smaller government, although in my lifetime I've never seen a administration that cuts the, the government. It's always bigger and bigger. The need for tax cuts for everyone. Yeah, right. Politics of fear. Politics of prosperity. Politics of the past. Politics of the future. Health care that you decide. Health care that HMOs decide. And Social Security. Social Security. Social Security. Everyone talks about it. But who has the courage to do anything about it, that issue, except to use it as a political football? All the talk, all the blather from politicians to analysts easily leads to confusion, frustration, and of course, anger, even among those of us who've already decided on our votes. I've already voted. But no matter who is elected, no matter who celebrates, no matter who moans, life will go on, the good and the bad as we struggle with surviving, seeking to fulfill our needs, the needs of our families and loved ones. And for the Christian, the struggle to continue living the faith, the struggle to be elected, if you would, to the kingdom of God. Would that the energy of political fervor and rhetoric, rhetoric that we hear in the modern times, if that would be imitated in the proclamation of the gospel by the living Christians, huh? be matched by the children of God. Politics aside, I would say to you this afternoon, this morning still, our God also puts before us easy to remember principles, short messages to influence our total lives as we continue in the few or the many years to come. Regardless of who is elected, personal responsibility of living the faith, of sharing the faith, of teaching the faith, remains the task for the goal of all serious Christians. And today the Word of God, I would say to you, presents to us the key principle, the main teaching of all scriptures for all who seek to enter that coming kingdom, huh? Who seek to live a moral and just life in our divided society, in our torn arena of politics, in our hurting communities, in our weak and dare I say sinful churches, huh? That essential principle, that pure and simple statement, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your whole soul, with your whole mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. If we could ever truly live that Judeo-Christian principle, we would have been all been elected, selected, chosen for the kingdom of God. And that kingdom would be complete here and now. In our world, our country, our state, our community, even our homes and churches would be better places. From God's word, Deuteronomy. After reading to them the entirety of the law of God, says the scripture, Moses, the Holy One, instructs the people, giving them a warning, if you would, about the dire consequences if they vote not to follow the Lord God. And Moses, to help them, gives them a simple, easy to remember principle of life. If followed, it would bring prosperity to the nation, power to the people, if pursued, it would lead to salvation. That principle, that easily remembered norm, hear and listen. The Lord is God alone. 
So love your Lord God with all that you are, with all your heart, soul, with all your strength. And all that you say and do, and all that you are, live the faith you profess. Abide by this simple yet so profound a principle, and you will have no difficulty in living life to the fullest. Book of Hebrews, the author ties this principle to Jesus himself, to the Messiah, the divine and eternal high priest, whose life, death, and resurrection, that once for all sacrifice and sin offering, brings about true reconciliation between God and his children, brings about a perfection of all believers, an election of all believers, all the faithful to salvation. Jesus Christ lived that principle of love to the ultimate, obedient even unto death. And Jesus Christ petitions the Father now on our behalf, encouraging us, strengthening us to live the love of God in all that we do and all that we say. Mark's Gospel, it is Jesus himself who clarifies this Judeo principle of faith by mending it, adding to it something to include that is the neighbor. Jesus teaches through word and example that it is impossible to keep the law of God, impossible to say that we love God if we do not at the very same time, the same moment, love as well everyone we meet. How's that for a political platform? And which politician do you think can say that? Jesus teaches that the love of God for his children has a social element. It's called the body of Christ. And that the body of Christ is possible only with loving regard for one another. That we are all in this venture together. Huh? Just as, as it said, our survival as a nation depends upon acting together to ensure the survival of democracy, so too our acting together in and through the love of one another ensures our survival within the body of Christ and ultimately ensures salvation. Jesus acknowledges that living by this basic principle of faith is what allows one to enter that promised kingdom, huh? And so, are, for, are you not far from that kingdom? Are you living the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you living that command of love, love of God, love of neighbor, that is everyone you meet, even that politician or politicians driving you crazy? If you can accept everyone as worthy of your love, even those you dislike, that member of another political party, that politician, that neighborhood busybody, that errant child, that troublesome elderly parent, if you can do that, you're not far from the kingdom. If you can supplement your acts of weekend or daily, even daily worship by teaching others the faith with faith actions as well as beautiful words, helping your children with their religious education, teaching them by modeling the faith. If you can do all of this, you're not far from the kingdom. If you can hold and add to your political tendencies acceptance of the Judeo-Christian command of love, being pro-life in all of its aspects, not just being anti-abortion, accepting the value of life being lived for those with deformity in old age as another race or creed, and even those on death row, if you can accept that, you are not far from the kingdom. So are you not far from the kingdom, or are you anywhere near that reign? Are you living the gospel of Jesus Christ? Are you living the command of love? And if someone were to fact check you, as they say, could you give evidence of the truth? Today, hear the word of God. The essence of all Christian scriptures, the secret of a holy life in this troubled world, the principle of good moral living leading to salvation, the key principle of life eternal is simple to say, love God and neighbor, easy to say, but extremely difficult to live, and even more difficult to teach by example, be we politician or voter, adult or child, priest or layperson. In these remaining days before the election, as we are deluged ad nauseum by the last minute sound bites, in the remainder of your lives, inundated with the worldly message, the alluring temptations towards selfishness and personal pleasure, in all of this, vote to be part of the kingdom of God. Accept the essence of the good news of salvation, the command to love God by loving your neighbor. Living this principle of Judeo-Christian love means we will be elected, we will be chosen from among all those who strive with this life. Chosen for what? For the kingdom of God. 
Hear, O Israel, hear, O St. Patrick Church. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole soul, your whole mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And this you will surely be elected to the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Please stand if you would.